Welcome back to Reading with Mo and let's talk today about my plans, my bookish reading plans for the month of April. I have quite a few books uh, that I'm rolling over from the month of March, a little bit more than I normally would. I think it's about five books I'm currently at least some partial way into that I know I'm not going to finish on this last day of March that I'm going to have to roll over into April. So let's talk about those five first and I think I have physical copies of a few of them. The first one is The Color of Law by Richard Rothstein. This is a nonfiction book about how, a forgotten history of how our government segregated America. I am currently about 34 pages into this one and it's really good so far. I just have not had a lot of time to sit down and read this past month which I figured was going to be the case but really I just did not have the time so I tried doing the audiobook for this but I have a really hard time following along with audiobooks when it comes to nonfiction books. Like I can occasionally do it but this just wasn't one I was able to so um, yeah I'm trying to get to this one. It's not really too long. It's only about 200 pages so if I just like set aside like a good two three hours of time I could probably finish this in one setting if I chose to but so yeah this is my first one that's being carried over for sure into April. <laughs> Next we have a book that I barely started and to be honest it's probably going to be on my TBR for the next few months just because of how long this book is and that is The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas. This is a beautiful edition from Penguin Clothbound Classics. I decided I'm not going to do the audiobook for this one. I checked out the audiobook from my library but it's like a slightly different um, um, like edition or translation. Sometimes I like to do audiobooks and physical books at the same time and that just was not going to happen with this book because um, they were different translations. So I'm just going to slowly read my way through this book. I'm not far so far. So far I'm um, about to be starting chapter 5 and it's page 39. I am enjoying it though so far. I'm really enjoying my time with this book. I don't want to rush through it and so I'll finish it when I finish it. Of course right when I sit down to film is when everyone wants to start honking, everyone wants to start blasting their music, <laughs> but we're gonna push on now. So the last physical book that I'm carrying over into April is Jonas Gordvine by Zora Neale Hurston. Now this book has been on my TBR for like two months. So far my plan to read all of Nor Zora Neale Hurston's books through this year is kind of failing, but it's okay. Um, I don't want to rush through her books. So far I think I'm about... I moved the bookmark too. I think I'm around page 50. Yeah I want to say I'm about page 50 so about a quarter of the way into this book. This is another one where my library doesn't even have a um, audiobook for this one which I wish they did because it's a book written in dialect so it would be just so much easier if I were to be able to listen to the book as I follow along with it but because it's written in dialect it is taking me a little bit longer to sit down and finish it. Once again this is a book that's not super long. I think it's about 200 pages so I am enjoying it so far. I do love Zora Neale Hurston's writing. It's just when books are written in dialect they just make you your brain have to work a little bit harder to be able to consume the story but I am enjoying the story so far. We are following this young man who is kind of um, growing up with his family being seen as kind of different because like he has siblings that he doesn't share a father with so that creates a tension between him and his stepfather and so we see him striking out on his own. Um, I really am enjoying it so far and I'm interested to see where the story's going. The other two books that I have started and haven't finished yet are books I have checked out from my library app. So. The first one is an audiobook that I'm listening to and that's Murder Your Employer, The, the McMaster's Guide to Homicide by Rupert Holmes. This is a new release that came out in uh, this past month in March. So far I feel like the story is interesting but I don't know why if I'm just like not really in the frame of mind. I haven't been listening to a lot of audiobooks the past week or two. I feel like with this book I could see it being such a well done movie <laughs> and I feel like I would like to prefer to consume this story as a movie because I feel like it would just be done so well. There are two audiobook narrators for this book. There's um I think they're actually like at famous actors. I have to look up who it was again because now I'm blanking on the names. Yes this book is read by Neil Patrick Harris and Simon Vance. The audiobook narrator who I believe is Simon Vance, um, his voice is a little bit harder to listen to as an audiobook 
personally uh, because when I speed up his voice it just I cannot understand what he's saying like I can understand the one audiobook narrator who sound, who has the younger sounding voice who I believe is you know, Patrick Harris but so with Simon Vance I just cannot I, don't, I think it's a combination of him being older and having uh, an accent that when it's sped up I just cannot understand his parts so even when I speed it up only to like 1.5 like, I still struggle with with that so um that is one thing that's also making it take so much longer for me to get through this audiobook but I eventually will and what this book is about is we are following this basically like academy where people go to learn how to become professional murderers each person has like someone that they're trying to murder in their personal life and so some people are there by choice some not by choice and so our main character that we're following he isn't there by choice someone is sponsoring him to go to this academy after he unsuccessfully um, attempts to murder his employer. The other book that I'm currently reading from my Libby app is a short story collection. It got returned to the library because I didn't finish it in time to as like uh, I think I had like three weeks that I had it on hold didn't finish it so I'm currently on the hold list waiting to be able to check out another copy again and that book is called A Darker Wilderness Black Nature Writing from Soil to Stars edited by Erin Sharkey this is an essay anthology and I was really enjoying it so far I can definitely see myself giving this book a five star rating which is also why I didn't really want to like um speed read through it too quickly because I was really enjoying it and it's definitely making me feel like I need to also pick up more nonfiction books centered around nature because I was really enjoying this one. But so far I'm only like almost a quarter of the way into this book so I still have a ways to go but I don't think it was a very long book so whenever I do get that hold back from my library I'll definitely be finishing it. So I have a few other physical books that I wanted to share with you guys that I'm going to attempt to get to in April. We'll see because once again April is just like a busy month. I have something going on every single weekend work's been busy so we'll see how much of these I can get to. I always like to create an overly ambitious TBR for myself. The first one is an Isabella Allende book. I am continuing on with reading the books from her that I have on my shelves and this one is called The Infinite Plan. I'm on hold at my library currently for the audiobook of this. This is another historical fiction novel written by her. This one takes place um, we're following Gregory Reeves born in the Hispanic barrio of Los Angeles um, grew up in poverty, survived the killing fields of Vietnam, and is now a lawyer in San Francisco. Though he has successfully survived this hard journey, Gregory's life has suddenly gone off the rails thanks to an illusory and wrong-headed quest that has left him feeling lost and listless. So actually I was wrong. This is not a historical fiction book. So this is actually gonna be my first Isabel Allende book where it hasn't been a historical fiction book, so I am interested to see um, how I like that. Then we have a book that was sent to me that is coming out I believe either in March or April and it was sent to me from Harper Perennial and that's a short story collection called A Manual for How to Love Us by Erin Slaughter. I love the cover on this book. I think it is so gorgeous and this is a short story collection. Erin Slaughter shares the stereotype of the sorrowful woman in distress Fearing the domestic and honoring the pharaoh in all of us. It's set across the oft overlooked towns in the American South, grieving women embrace their wildest impulses as they attempt to master their lives. Lastly, for the physical books, I chose two books that you can't see right now, but um, there's a shelf right up here that I'm trying to read a few books from. I will be posting my like tour of that shelf uh, probably in a couple weeks from now, but if you want to sneak peek at a few books that are currently sitting on that shelf, I chose a couple to read that I haven't yet. The first one is Bridget Jones Diary by Helen Fielding. I mentioned these both I believe in my March TBR but once again didn't get to them so I want to read this book, see how I enjoy it, and then watch the movie. And then the other one is Chernobyl Prayer by Svetlana Alexievich. It's described as a collage of oral testimony that turns into the psychobiography of a nation not shown on any map. And this is a book in translation. I think it may be um, nonfiction, but this is published by Penguin Modern Classics. As if that wasn't enough, lastly, for the month of um, April, I'm going to try and get to as many new releases that I have featured on my spring uh, radar video. If you guys haven't seen that, I will try to remember to link that down below. I just last week posted the books that are coming out over March, not March, April, May, and June, the spring months that I'm interested in. There are nine books being published in 
the month of April that I featured in that video. So while I know I'm not going to get to all nine during the month, I would definitely like to get to a good amount of those. Um, I'll go ahead and just briefly flash up the covers on the books I featured in that video that are coming out in April and of these nine I'm going to attempt to read as many as I can. Uh, most likely I'll be able to get at least a few of them as audiobooks from my library and which ones I read will just be dependent on how long the wait lists are at my library and like how many copies they order. So I don't really want to commit to any of them exactly because who knows when I will get them. So that is it for my April TBR. I'm really excited. There's so many books that I can't wait to get to. I am just bummed that I know I am not going to get to all of them just because of circumstances over the month. I am doing some traveling finally and I just have a lot going on. My sister's bachelorette weekend is coming up as well as a music festival that I'm going to be going to. So um, yeah, like I said, I'm going to get as many of these as I can, but we'll see. Stay tuned, subscribe so you can see my April wrap up and see how many of these I actually ended up getting to. Uh, that's it for today. Let me know if you guys have any reading plans for the month of April and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!